It's been applauded, it's been criticized. So what is the B&O BO Sound Explore really like? What's up everyone, it's Jonathan from Smart Home Sounds. If you've just landed on our channel now, welcome. We're a home audio visual retailer based in the UK and our mission is to help you find the perfect products for you. So today we're reviewing the newest portable speaker from Scandinavian audio manufacturer Bang & Olufsen, which is named the BO Sound Explore. So we're gonna be putting the Explore through its paces to see if it truly lives up to its name and price point and answering questions like, can it really compete in such a crowded market of portable speakers? Now it has already got some very popular competitors, including the Sonos Roam, JBL Flip 5, and the Ultimate Ears Boom 3, which we will cover in a bit. Now, there are a few reviews out there really coming down hard on this speaker, so we'll cover all the need to knows, tell you what we've found in our testing, and let you make the final decision for yourself. So before we get into it, it would be great if you can do me a quick favor by considering subscribing to the channel if you're into music, speakers, and TVs, as we've got plenty of content on the way which you may find useful. So without further ado, let's get straight into the review. First things first, let's get the key info out of the way. So Bang & Olufsen are well known for their distinguishable designs and luxury aesthetic, and the BO Sound Explore is the latest and most affordable addition to their lineup with an RRP of £169. So it comes in a choice of three different colors, black anthracite, which is one we have here, green and gray mist. And I'm actually a fan of all three colors. I think they work well. It's also B&O's most compact speaker in the range, measuring in at a width and depth of 8.1 centimeters and a height of 12.4 centimeters. So it can fit in the palm of your hand and it actually was smaller than I was expecting. So it weighs 637 grams, which is actually heavier than you might think and heavier than most portable speakers. And B&O claimed that it is because the Explore uses grade two anodized aluminum instead of plastic that you might find on other speakers. So comparing this with the Sonos Roam, that one is actually 430 grams and you do actually notice the difference. So just keep that in mind uh, as it might come as a bit of a surprise when you do get it out of the box. Now, before I get into the nitty gritty of how this thing sounds, let's first look at the design, which is actually something I think B&O have nailed with this speaker and one of my key pros for this product. So B&O are renowned for their build quality and this is no exception. I love that it uses an aluminium casing as it just feels more robust and well built. It's also anti-scratch, so it's pretty tough against scrapes and retains its appearance even in the great outdoors. Now this is something I was skeptical about as it feels like it would mark, but we've thrown it around and put it to the test and it has actually proved me wrong. The only thing I'd say is that we found these little slits in the design. Uh, they seem to trap bits and they're quite hard to get out. So sand and small stones, they ended up sort of getting trapped in there. It is a bit of a pain, but if you're living a more rugged lifestyle, you might think I am being pedantic. So on the top of the speaker, you can see you've got the Bang and Olufsen logo etched into it. Now, I don't usually like brand logos being too prominent. I think this is a nice balance. Looking at the top panel controls, I think it's all nice and intuitively laid out. They're tactile and easy to press. So you've got the, uh, the play pause, the volume up and down, and then you've got the power button and the Bluetooth pairing, which is really all you need. You can also skip track by double tapping play pause and then triple tapping will actually go back to the previous track. So if we uh, take a look at the back of the speaker, you've got this handy carabiner and aluminium hook to clip onto a rucksack or bag and take with you traveling or cycling, that sort of thing. Uh, it's quite rare to see on a portable speaker, so I think that is a nice little addition. Um, I do appreciate that as, as well as some other portable speakers like the UE Boom only give you a sort of small hook and uh, you use your own. So it's nice that it all comes together and it actually feels like it would become part of your camping equipment and not feel out of place despite its more premium feel. Right then, I'm gonna jump straight into the sound test now as I know you guys don't like to be kept waiting. Now I know a lot of reviewers have given this some stick for sounding tinny, which is nowhere near its asking price of 169 pounds, but I think that is harsh because a lot of them didn't touch on the B&O app, which is what keeps the Explore a viable product in my opinion. Now I'd highly recommend, if not insist, if you own this product, you download the B&O app and play with the settings because in all honesty, I got this out of the box and I was a little bit underwhelmed with the sound to say the least. If I wasn't able to adjust the settings, I wouldn't buy the speaker and I wouldn't be recommending it. However, once I customized the sound using the Biosonic sound tuning, it did redeem itself immediately. 
My recommended setting would be just under the energetic as it maximizes the base and it just gives it more presence. Stay right away from bright and relaxed as it completely kills the base and makes this speaker sound very empty. Now I did test an array of different genres and on the whole I was impressed. The vocals are clean and pronounced and it does offer a really musical and playful sound. It must be said that even on this energetic setting you don't unlock a whole new level of bass. And yes, there are other speakers for a cheaper price that you get better bass on, like the JBL Flip 5, but I think that is partly missing the point of the B&O Explore. If you want the best bang for your buck, definitely go for something like the JBL Flip 5. But if you want a portable speaker that is more robust with a more premium build quality, and you're not looking to fill huge areas of sound, I think the Explore is more than capable in this environment. Now, I would definitely say if you take it past the 80% mark, it loses much of its credibility because let's face it, it's got a 1.8 inch driver. It's not meant to go ultra loud. So you'd need to look higher up in the B&O range or a different brand altogether for extra volume. One thing I do wanna give the speaker credit for is the 360 degree sound. So when portable speakers have multi-directional functionality, you usually don't get the same experience front to back. But I walked around the Explore uh, 360 degrees and got exactly the same experience wherever I was, which I think is quite difficult to pull off, especially in a speaker of this size. In the real world, it means that you can pop this down in the middle of a group of friends and everyone can enjoy it the same. So you don't have to be in the sweet spot of the speaker. So that was all my opinion from testing this speaker. Now it's time for a sound quality test so you can make your own mind up. I'll include a clip of the EQ optimization in action so you can see what difference it makes. People like to give a little, then you take the rest. I'm hoping one day maybe I can find a place to rest. I fell in love with life and wonder where it take me next. I like the hug. Another big selling point of this speaker is its portability and durability. Now, as I've mentioned, it is resistant to scratches and bumps, but because it's got an IP67 rating, it's actually fully dustproof and fully submersible in water up to one meter for 30 minutes. So you don't even need to be afraid to take it out in the rain or even in your own shower. IP67, I would say, is the benchmark for portable speakers nowadays, so I am glad to see that they've ticked this box. It keeps it nice and competitive with other speakers. It has also been drop tested to 1.5 meters, so you can drop it from that height and it'll continue to function no problem at all, although I wouldn't recommend just throwing it everywhere. We did take this out and about on a weekend away, and I think this is where this little thing excels. I can see this being taken on camping trips, barbecues, adventures, that sort of thing. Now, as we've said from the sound, it's not an out and out party speaker, but for those types of occasions, that's where I think it has its place. So let's touch on the list of features then. So being a portable speaker, it's not gonna be an endless list of features like you might get in a home speaker, um, which is to be expected. So straight off the bat, you've got Bluetooth 5.2, which at the time of filming this video is the latest version of Bluetooth, which is nice to see. So you'll get all the maximum range and maximum compression quality from your music. You can also connect two devices at one time, which is actually quite useful, I found, if you're with a friend who also wants to partake in the control of the music, which is a good or a bad thing, depending on their taste. I know a lot of my friends don't have the same taste, so it's usually me who makes them listen to mine. So this saves you having to unpair and pair again, which can be quite annoying over time. So it's not a new feature, I know, but it is worth mentioning. I do think it is a good plus for the speaker. Now in terms of battery life, you have got 27 hours at a medium volume, which certainly outperforms a lot of portable speakers out there. It's generally quite impressive. The only other portable speaker that I can think of that gets close to this battery life is the Marshall Emberton at 20 hours. And even that's quite a difference. Um, but that's not to say there aren't other options out there too. Obviously at higher volumes, the battery life is not gonna be anywhere near this and we got about four hours at 90% volume. 
Now, as I've highlighted, I wouldn't be pushing this speaker past 80% to retain audio quality. So the battery life for me and in those circumstances isn't bad at all. You can check the battery life on the BNO app. Again, another reason to download it. A flashing red light will also illuminate on the front when it hits 10% battery. So an indicator on the speaker I think would have been useful uh, because we have seen that on other speakers like the Emberton, but I feel it would maybe have distracted from the overall aesthetic that BNO were going for, a nice simple and you know, noise-free design. So if we touch on charging quickly as well, it takes two hours to recharge from dead if you connect the USB-C to USB cable to a five volt power brick. Now B&O do not provide a power brick in the box. A lot of speakers have started to do that, including the Sonos Roam. So they only provide the cable in order to recharge at the quoted two hour time. So you will need to make sure you've already got it connected to a five volt power adapter. You can also stereo pair two explores together for a left and right, which is a really nice to have, and it would really ramp up that audio performance. So where do I think this sits in the portable speaker market right now? So if you've watched our Rome versus Boom 3 versus Flip 5 versus Emberton review, then you'll know that I hate saying that one speaker is better than another because ultimately different speakers will be better for different people. But what I can do is give you my opinion having to spend a lot of time with these speakers. So. Overall, the Boom 3 and Flip 5 would be better options for out and out volume and louder bass and just fill in those larger areas with bigger sound. They are also nice and durable for taking out and about. Um, I would say the Roam is more suitable for those looking for a speaker which can be taken on the go, but also become part of a home ecosystem. And personally, I like the sound performance that the Roam offers. The Emberton is for those looking for perhaps a more retro style. It's got a very, very good battery life and a nice warm sound, though it's probably the least powerful out of this lineup. So the Explore, I would say, fits somewhere in the middle. Once you've played with the EQ settings and found a sound you like, I think it is a good option for holidays and taking on your adventures with you. So as I've mentioned, well, multiple times already, it's not so good for larger parties, but the battery life and durability make it one worth considering if that's not what you'd primarily be using it for. Another speaker that is worth highlighting is the B&O's BO Sound A1 Gen 2 portable speaker, which has a slightly higher price tag of £199. So they do have very different aesthetics and designs. The Gen 2, I would say, offers a slightly uh, more powerful sound performance than the Explore, and it can fill a larger space. It also offers a voice assistant, and with inbuilt mics, it can be used for voice calls as well. The Explore can also play stereo content, whereas the A1 downmixes it to mono, which can be frustrating, and it's a bit of a downside for me. The Explore also offers a slightly longer battery life and again, a slightly more rugged feel despite being slightly heavier um, at 0.6 kilograms compared with 0.5 kilograms. So then is it worth 169 pounds? So I can't answer that question for everyone. I do think you pay a premium for the brand and the higher bill quality, um, but this is important for some people. In my personal opinion, I do think £169 is at the higher price uh, end, especially considering it's £10 more expensive than the Sonos Roam. And with that, you've got a much more in-depth and cohesive ecosystem with Sonos. The BNO app is nowhere near as useful or reliable as the Sonos, but the app is the saving grace to the Explore because of the EQ adjustments. And I do think that this will be crucial if you buy this speaker. Now you can hate on me all you want based on what you've heard on YouTube and because we're a retailer which sells the Explore, but after a lot of testing and optimizing, the end result is that I think this is a good speaker and it will appeal to a certain audience. Feel free to take advantage of our 30 day listen better promise and have a play with it. And of course you can return it to us if it's not for you. If you don't try it, you'll never know. I would also like to reiterate again, that I don't think the Explore will win any awards in the sound quality department, although the EQ optimization certainly helps. And I think there are better sounding portable speakers on the market at a cheaper price. But I think the Explore has some great things going for it, like it's 27 hour battery life, it's appealing design, build quality, and durability, which would be enough for some people to be swayed from its competitors. So that's the end of my review on the BO Sound Explore, guys. I hope you found it useful, and remember to drop me a like, uh, or a dislike, uh, on the video, depending on what you think. Now, I would really like to hear your thoughts, so pop a comment down below and let me know what you think about the BO Sound Explore. Do you agree with the Explore's criticism or do you think it's a bit harsh? Um, if you want to give the Explore a go, I will put a link to our product page in the description below. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you down below in the comments and hopefully catch you on our next video.